Centralized exchanges are running out of Chainlink, and this is your last chance to get in before BlackRock and before the World Economic Forum elite, because real-world assets are about to take this industry by storm. Time to discover crypto. Chills. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know the World Economic Forum at Davos is happening this week. And the theme this year is rebuilding trust. And this theme is going to fit strongly into the Chainlink narrative. Uh, while the World Economic Forum focuses on social and global economic issues, there's been a growing presence of blockchain and crypto at the meetings in recent years. In 2024, the focus has shifted to the role of AI. And then this is important, the tokenization of real world assets and Chainlink is poised to take this narrative by storm. But what is asset tokenization and how does it work? I do want to give a big shout out to Chainlink God and Virtual Bacon. They have a lot of good Chainlink knowledge. Tokenized assets require high quality off-chain data from secure and reliable Chainlink oracles. And asset tokenization is just a term for the use of smart contracts and blockchain technology to represent ownership of rights of an asset as a tradable on-chain token. But what kind of assets would we be talking about? We're talking about things like fiat currency, think of foreign exchange market, equity, T-bills, credit, commodities, carbon credits, which could be a huge narrative this decade, intellectual property, and even fine art. Also, similar to gold billion warrants and house deeds, we're going to see more and more tokenization of real-world assets. And since they're talking about it at a World Economic Forum, and you're seeing Larry Fink say the same thing, I expect this to be a huge narrative as we get up and ready for this bull run of the next year and a half. If you want to learn more about this, Chainlink has a great educational website. We were just looking at the asset tokenization page page. Now we're going to check out oracles, but not the kind that bends spoons. What is a blockchain oracle? An oracle is essentially going to take data off chain and put it on chain. You can see this graphic right here, just all the different entities within crypto that use price aggregation. And again, this is just for price. So Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, Uniswap, whether it's decentralized or centralized, they like to have the most accurate price data feeds. Chainlink oracles is a great way for that. Or a price data aggregator, a CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, or even the chains themselves, uh, BNB chain, Polygon, Ethereum. And Chainlink publishes, you know, how many total Oracle networks they have. This is about a thousand protocols using Chainlink. This is very, very great for their business model. And I expect this number to definitely skyrocket. I wouldn't be surprised to see this number 10,000 plus uh, by the Q3 of 2025. And it's not just the chains that we're looking at over here. Here you can see Chainlink is now being used on over 78 chains, 392 different protocols with over about a thousand people using it within this ecosystem. And we just scroll through, I mean, Arbitrum, Ethereum, Avalanche, uh, Polygon, uh, there's just uh, no, almost no limit OP uh, optimism. There's almost no limit for the amount of chains that do use Chainlink. Now we're going to talk about the supply and exchanges hitting a four-year low, but if you want to know a little bit more about Chainlink, we made a video about a, this is actually two months ago now, uh, best opportunity for Chainlink. And we, we cover the origin, we cover a little bit more on oracles, and uh, we have some pretty good future price predictions. But now I'm even more bullish than I was back then, and it's because of Larry Fink and the World Economic Forum. And here within the business model for Chainlink, you can see, you know, the more often you use the Oracle services, the more you're going to have to pay. Uh, you know, for example, if say you're going to do a sports score, well, if you're playing a baseball game, the score might only change five times, maybe eight times. Okay, third inning, okay, they got a point. Okay, you go ahead and update. Versus, say, a basketball game. Imagine trying to change the score every time for a basketball game. There's going to be a lot more data hits for a basketball game versus a baseball game, or even weather. If you want to give weather once every 24 hours, well, you're going to just use that chain link once a day. But imagine you're trying to check atmospheric pressure or humidity at some sort of remote Antarctic station, and you got to do it every 15 minutes. There's going to be varying usage uh, of those chain link tokens. Also, they have uh, a pretty cool protocol for up and coming chains and platforms and protocols. They have a user fee sharing, so you don't have to have too much money up front. You end up sharing your earnings with Chainlink. Uh, the first fee sharing proposal was between Chainlink and GMX, uh, where Chainlink is going to get 1.2% of the fees earned by GMX. So great, great business model. But let's talk about the Chainlink disappearing off exchanges. Is this real multi-year high? What does this mean for the price? And we're going to do a price prediction based off this analysis here. So we're hitting a four-year low for the amount of Chainlink on exchanges. And this is from Santimus. So we're going to go to the tweet right here and then enjoy the mini break out hitting around 1582 but the supply of chain link on exchanges is now below 50 
15% for the first time in four years. The amount of uh, greater than zero coins wallet is also within 6% of its all-time high. And right here, you can see in the graphic, ratio of link on exchanges has dropped to 14.87%. Folks, that is about only one out of every 14 tokens. So you got 15 tokens around, you might be lucky to find one on an exchange. The rest, diamond hands are holding on to these things, baby. This is the lowest level since February 5th, 2020. Well, let's go back in the Wayback Machine and let's check out Chainlink's price here around that time. We're gonna go draw a circle around February 5th just so we have a little bit of a better idea. You can see it, it is this candle right here. This is the last time we had this few Chainlink's tokens on centralized exchanges. Well, from the 5th in just a very, very short amount of time, Wow, in two weeks, it pumped 71%. And if you look at that next value area high, uh, 200%, that was a like 3X, and this was in 158 days. Now, you're gonna see a little bit of a squiggle line right there. This is the March COVID crash. This is March 2020. I like to think, uh, you know, without that COVID crash, price action would look a little bit more normalized. But let's look at the rest of this bull run. This was the mini 2020 DeFi summer. And you can see Chainlink was just trading sideways. It pretty much traded sideways for a fairly long, time, although this was actually a good pump. Over 150 days, Chainlink pumped 70%. Now remember, you essentially could have got that pump in two weeks. If you held on though, six months later, you were finally rewarded. If you didn't sell at this point and you held through the COVID crash and you're down and you're upside down in your investment, you thought all hope was lost. Six months later, there is a rainbow shining through the clouds. And let's look at the price action here. So after 150 days, technically closer to five months, I want to see this next run up. So after that, all right, we had a 70% pump. All right, well, some of the gas out of the tank. No, there was still room to run here, folks. And we're going to start this bull run July 5th or so. You can see that was about the first of the big green candles in a very, very short amount of time. After pumping 70% in two weeks, Chainlink then pumped 325% in 41 days. Now, it took a long time to hit that short-term top, but if you were patient, you were rewarded. It did take a while. It was a total of about 193 days, but you had a very, very good pump. Now, now remember, there was a little bit of a drawback that we are going to blame on the <coughs> you know what. But now we're hitting these levels again, and what does it mean? Now, previous to the last run-up on February 5th, you saw we were kind of trading low and sideways, and then we had a little bit of a rally, and we're seeing something similar here. We had a very long period of sideways action. In fact, if we go ahead and draw this out, this was 526 days. And then we had a little bit of a run-up, and now we're back into a consolidation period, and now we're echoing February 5th of 2020. Now, if you crawl, the first run-up was about 70% in 14 days. What does a 70% run-up look like for right now? 70% would give us a roughly $25 chain link. And I think a lot of people think a $25 chain link is very attainable Q1, Q2 of 2024. But let's get more bullish and let's see how high can this thing really fly. And to do that, we're going to see where was Chainlink around this period. Now, remember, this is after the first run-up. This is the end of DeFi summer. You can see it peaking out in the middle of August. This is August 16th. Where, where was Chainlink August 16th, 2020? I have found that uh, ex exact snapshot, and Chainlink was a top five token. And we're looking right now, a top five coin is going to give you around a $40 billion market cap. Chainlink right now is only coming in for about $8 billion. That is about a little bit less than a 5x. Eight, it would be a 5x at $8 billion exactly. We're at $8.5 billion. 5x for Chainlink would be a $75 Chainlink from this level. And let me show you why I think we can hit a $75 Chainlink sooner than you think. Now, this is a best case scenario for all the bulls out there, but this works for Bitcoin and we're going to try it with Chainlink. One of the metrics we've used for determining Bitcoin's price action is look at the run ups to the previous bull run to predict the top of the next bull run. And we're going to look at it real quick. You see here in the 2012, 2013, it touches, actually predicts the 2017 top. And then same thing here, 2015, 2016, you see where it touches, actually predicts the 2021 top. So what happens if we do it to Chainlink, everybody? This is, are you ready? Are you sitting down? This is going to blow you away. All right. So we hit it there. We hit it there. And then exactly four years, almost to the day, uh, when we, we topped out a September, sorry, right here, September, August of 2020. Where does this give us a $75 chain link? Wow. Look at that. August, 2024. 
coming in perfectly. Now, I don't predict this trend line to be accurate here. It is interesting how it works for Bitcoin, and it's kind of given us a good prediction for Chainlink. So with this confluence of events, we got World Economic Forum. We have Larry Fink and BlackRock. We have, you know, just the price action, what we've seen lately. And we have the amount on exchanges at all-time lows. I've never felt more bullish for Chainlink. In fact, I'm going to DCA into Chainlink today. I'm going to buy at least two and a half, everybody. Let's go, let's go ahead and start stacking up this link. And I want to give you a shout-out to all the Link Marines who've been holding through the bear market. Go ahead, hit that like button if you held through the bear market, even if you knew you shouldn't have. Just, you just love Chainlink that much. Make sure you check out the other video we did on Chainlink if you want to learn more about what is an oracle as well. I'm DZ for Discover Crypto. I'll see you and your Chainlink bags at the top.